Okay, so now we have uh, made some progress here. We've got most of our hemisphere, our dome, built, and we just have the top to close in. And this is kind of something that's helpful to see it done. The, the techniques don't change too much, but there is a little bit of change. Uh, so I want you to see that. So as we go here, but the other thing I want you to see is some bad habits here. You can see here's my uh, clay I haven't used yet from the bag. Always keep it closed up. Don't leave it open. Clay is always trying to dry, and our job is to manage moisture. So if you don't want it to dry, we do not let it dry. Okay, so now I'm just going to start here again, and um, I'm going to add the coil now and tip my hand, you can see my hand is kind of flat in the direction I want the clay to go. So I want it to go more inward towards itself. So I'm just wiping this coil and I'm really paying attention to doing it really well because it's gonna be harder and harder to get into the center here. So I wanna make sure that inside is done. Now, when I close this up, the inside will have some rough qualities that I will have to fix when I flip it over, I'll spend a little time scraping and shaping the inside when I flip it over. I can still get one more coil here. You can see I've got one around. I can do one more and still keep it pretty much in the shape of the dome that I want. But as I get to the very center, I'm not gonna be able to bring it right into itself. And it's gonna have to rise up a little bit. And I'll show you that in just a minute here. I'm gonna get a little bit more clay. Here we go. That's about it right there. That's it. And I'm going to just put my finger in there and wipe it and make sure I've got a really good join all the way around. And that'll have to suffice um, instead of the rib because um, the rib isn't going to be very easy to get into that space. So there it is. There's the start of it. I'll do a little bit more now. And you'll see what I'm going to do now. I'll take a little bit of clay and I'm going to just finish off this. I'm going to get a little more up here. I don't need much, but I'm going to let it go up a little bit. It's not going, I'm not going inward so much as just up because I can't really get access to that. So I put a lot of clay, much more than I need, and I'll be taking some of that off. But first step now is to continue my step one process of the coil building. And I want to wipe this. I want to be careful not to push so hard that I indent the dome. I want the dome to stay pretty much, I want to keep that dome shape and not to violate it by pushing it inward. So I've got to be very careful about how much pressure I put down there. And there you can see I've done one direction and now I'm doing another direction of my wiping as I use my fingers to finish off the, the outside here. But you can see we still have a hole. We haven't solved it yet. And that's what we're going to do. As soon as we get our last step here, of the wiping with the rib. And that helps us keep the dome shape, kind of notice any irregularities. We can push out if we put going in a little bit too much. And we can just push against our finger a little bit there. And that's how we are working it. And you can see it's gotten nice and smooth there. Now what I want to do is close this up. This is actually kind of a nice turnip shape. I might go, oh, I want to I want to keep the bottom in a turnip type shape, but I don't want that. I want a real hemisphere. So I'm going to start to push it in, you see, and as I push it in, I'm going to really work the clay together, squeeze it like I'm coiled and really smear it together, work it together as it goes in. And then it's going to, I'm going to bring it down a little bit as I do this. So I'm taking clay in my hands. I'm taking quite a bit of clay away as I compress it together. I'm just making sure to keep it compressed. Now, the other thing about this that's quite nice is we have what's called an air armature. And what that means is that the clay has been, has trapped a ball of air and there's no, it's, the air cannot escape. So when I hit it, it's like a balloon that pushes back against it. So I'm gonna clean this up one more time with a rib. And it'll take a few passes to do that. And you can see I'm using the turning table to get a nice, get around it evenly and nicely consistently. And then I'm just going to smooth it up a little bit. And I think we're ready to see about whether we've gone down far enough to be able to allow our paddling to do the final work. So here now, what I want to do is take my, my beautiful paddle, otherwise known as a two by four, and I'll start by 
really just pounding it down. So I've, I've made it kind of flat. Now that could be a very viable bottom shape. It could, you could say, okay, I want it flat just like that. And that'll be, when I flip the piece over, it's gonna be a flat bottom piece like that. And there are many, I'll show you one actually, I'll show you an African pot with just a flat bottom. And that's, a lot of pots are made that way. But I want a dome. So I'm gonna go and hit that piece into a dome shape. And now, when I get to phase two, I'm going to flip this piece over. And I can only do that after it's dried and become leather hard enough so that it'll hold its weight. That's very important. And so I have to wait for just the right time. But for now, when I flip this over and I cut off that slab that we put on that wooden bat, on the round bat, when I cut that slab off, this inside is going to be kind of like a belly button. It'll look all kind of convoluted and, and then you'll have to scratch it and put slip in there and, and scratch it and scrape it until it's a smooth shape. But it, there's plenty of clay down there to do that. So that'll work out. So now there's our dome. One last step for us now is to decide the foot. We're going to put a foot on this. And the question is, how big should the foot be? I could do a foot about that big. That seems a little small. It's, it's viable, you can do that, but the problem with a foot that small is that you're always gonna have a problem with um, it wanting to slip over or to fall over. Um, the poor man's Richter scale will tell you if you're having an earthquake and you see the pot go over. But um, that's one option. Um, the other thing is that I could, um, I could, attach the coil there and have it come out as an angle. So that's another design choice. And one of the ways to work through these design possibilities is to look at all the pictures and all the videos that I've provided. And you can also go online and, and Google spherical African pots or African traditional African pots and look at pictures of them and get your idea of what your design could look like, what the possibilities are. Um, you can also take your sketchbook and do lots of little sketches, and I'll do a little video on that to show you, and just make some silhouettes and see, get some ideas, work out some ideas. For now, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a little bit, and I'm just gonna try to hold this steady, and I'm just gonna spin it, just make it a little bit bigger. Something about like that. And that'll be my, um, that will be my foot. So in order to attach, I'm going to attach a coil there to make a foot. But when I, for this case, if we're changing direction, it's still soft clay, but I'm going to score it. And normally I would use a fork or a scoring tool, not just this needle tool, because this takes a long time. But um, this is what I have. I don't know that I have a fork around anywhere. So I'm going to just score this around that line that I put in, just like that. And so that's gonna be where the coil is going. It makes a nice, clear, readable mark for the coil for my foot. And it's not gonna be a very pronounced foot. It'll be a little circle, a little, little circle of play. Um, it has to be taller than this dome in the middle. And so we're almost done here. And that'll just, when you score like this, what you're doing is you're increasing the surface area tremendously, the surface area. You know, if I create all these little gouges like this, what's happening to the surface area is instead of a flat surface, you have this, this undulation that's going So you're multiplying, you're increasing the surface area by a factor of four, five, six, seven times the amount of surface area. So it's got a better joint that way. The other thing you're doing is by putting this slip in, and here's slip right here. But the slip is all these little bits of clay that you see lying around here. I take them and I throw them in there and they, they dry out on the table and I put them in a little water and they become a very liquidy clay. And that becomes um, a beautiful little joining material. And that just softens. You need to do this for two reasons. One is it softens up all those little uh, gouges we put in there. So it makes it nice and soft for joining. But the other thing is when you put those gouges in, one of the cardinal rules of working with clay is you cannot ever, 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 and you kind of get a sense how important it is, you never can trap air. So if you put lots of slip in there, no air can be in there where there's liquid. So that keeps you from trapping air. So now I'm gonna take a coil 
and I'm gonna put it right on that and very gently, I don't wanna to push too hard because um, I do not want to uh, indent the dome. I wanna keep the dome, I wanna have the dome have a lot of integrity. So I'm just gonna push this down. And I don't know if I have enough clay. It looks like I'm gonna fall short, which is kind of a bummer. I should have started with a bigger piece of clay, but that's all right. I can make that work. Take a little clay here, again, overlapping a little bit, and I'm putting that bit on there. There's my foot. And I, like I said, I don't want a really pronounced foot, but I do want it to be very even. I want it to be very even. And so I'm going to now do the outside and push it right down into all that really beautifully scored and slipped area and just really wipe the clay in, make sure it really goes into the pot. Um, really want that to happen. I want it to be a really, really big joint. So I'm working that way down in there, all the way around. I can actually show you what it looks like here. See me wiping the clay down, just wiping. And again, my finger overlaps uh, the previous stroke, so keep it even walled as I go. And uh, I can see um, the place that I've worked before coming up. Here it comes, and I've gone all the way around. So now that's the first phase I've done inside and outside. Now I take my rib once again, and I, now that I have a couple of slip, I can take, clean the rib off, and all those little bits become really useful slip. And you'll find this in all your projects. So now, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna really think about creating a very even foot. So I wanna really get a nice smooth inside. Um, and I really wanna get a good joint too because all this clay is going up and around into a dome and all of a sudden this is a different direction. So when we fire it, it's gonna, there's gonna be some stress on that. So we wanna make sure that we help join it really well. So now I'm gonna do the outside with the rib. And again, I'm overlapping a lot so that I can really get a nice even shape here. And I'm looking at the connection between the foot and as it smooths into there. So I'm getting a, a very even and, and well transition, nice transition there. I'm get an even flowing transition into the form there. Okay, and then I can take this and smooth it around a little bit. As it's flowing, and even take some time and even up the, uh, the dome. Remember, I have that beautiful uh, air armature, so if I, if I push a little bit, it's swelling out. It's getting a nice kind of swollen shape. Here's a trick that's really helpful when you're doing all this work around, is make a mark. Make one, one clear mark there, not too deep, just a little mark. Can you see that, that I put a mark in there? And that tells you where you start. I started at that mark. So you can treat the pot evenly and you can come around and work until you get back to that mark that you made. And then, um, and then you stop and then you go around again, but now you're a little lower. And you can go all the way around until you get to that mark you made. And this is just smoothing. I can scrape it out more when, I'm, when it's leather hard. I can show you some of those texture techniques. And this piece, I think I'm gonna show you the applique technique, maybe do some, some lizard designs or something. Um, so this is the start of the foot. You can see that the top is very uneven. So if I can hold my, my hand very evenly here with the needle tool, I can start to get an even cut all the way through. And that gives me a nice, even foot. And I can emphasize it a little bit with, with my paddle. You can see it's a very uh, slight foot. It's not a dramatic foot. It's very small and delicate. And a few things I want to do. I'm not going to worry. Normally, I don't want that sharp edge, and I want these to be even thickness. And I'll deal that when it's leather hard. I can, I can shape it and scrape it and move it in a nice way that um, I can really finish it without worrying too much. So that's looking really good. One more thing on this side before I finish it up, and that is I want to take my, let's see if I can find that pencil. Here's that little pencil I was using before. And I'm gonna sign this. Remember, we have to sign our work so we don't get it confused with each other here. And so there's my signature 
right in the bottom of the pot. And so um, it will stay there. Now, um, most of my pieces, I'm comfortable signing them in the bottom like this. The only exception is I never sign the foot of a T-ball because that's a compositional concern. You're really um, working hard to get that foot to look a certain way. So now this needs to get leather hard and that can, depending on whether you put it out uncovered in the sun or you drape it lightly with plastic, that can take anywhere from one to four days. So here, uh, to set it up though, when I flip it over, I want this bottom edge here to still be soft so that I can continue to build on the other side. I want this section here to start drying up. As it dries, the, 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 um, the water molecules will evaporate out of the clay and they're actually rounded like ball bearings. So that's what makes the clay plastic. So as the water molecules evaporate out, the clay becomes stiffer and stiffer. So you wanna catch it where this is stiff enough to hold the weight without collapsing the form when you flip it over. But at the same time, you don't want it so stiff that you can't air the clay. One of the ways we can protect that bottom edge is with this. This is a piece of uh, an old uh, terry cloth towel that I've torn into a strip and I've gotten it wet. And so what I'm gonna do is just wrap it around the very bottom. I don't need too much, but just around the very bottom. And that is going to keep that part of it damp. And then in order to keep the water in there and not have it evaporate out, a strip of just a thin piece of plastic. And I can take that and cover up, I can cover up the um, plastic. And I may do another one of these because this is a little bit too narrow. And so I'll do another one of these. And then you can see, um, let's see if I can finish this one this way. You can see that it's, it's on there. And I might, I do need one more strip of plastic that I'll, I'll tear and put on there. And then it's ready to wait to dry until the next part of the demonstration, which I'll show you when it's dry enough, I'll flip it over and we'll do that. So there you go. Now as a kind of a treat, kind of an idea here to show you where we're headed. There's so many different shapes and forms and you see that in the videos and pictures that are provided. But here is the real thing. This is a pot from Africa here. And it is, um, it was a gift from my older brother who lives in Japan and collects some African art. And uh, you can see the bottom there. This bottom is slightly rounded, but it, it's got a flat spot. So it sits gently. And you can see that there's very little ornamentation. There's two little details. There's just a little applique band of clay that was then with a little, um, like a something, very, like a clay tool or a chopstick, it was just a little, little points in there because a little indentation like that really goes dark as the light doesn't go in there and you can, it makes a nice uh, detail. It's got a rope handle on the, um, goes through the two clay handles, these lovely clay handles. And this pot was used uh, for beer, um, which is kind of an interesting idea. Um, you can see it's quite big, a lot of beer, but it wasn't for one person. Uh, people would sit around and you can find beautiful photographs on this if you uh, maybe Google uh, beer drinking pots in Africa or something. You see people all sitting around with these with these five foot long straws and they're all drinking out of the same pot. And this would be one of those. So there's a beautiful example of uh, a beer pot from Africa. So that gets us this far. Here again is our piece all um, ready for the next level of the demonstration. And I will show you that uh, when we uh, get to the next video. Uh, everybody stay safe, make art. And I look forward to our next conversation.